Lanello loved to give his sermons for a Sabbath evening and his discourses on cosmic law. And I love those. And many of you probably heard many of them, and I was assigned to hear all of them <laughs> as a discipline. So it was a great discipline, and it helped me in preparing for this mission. Lanello had a great sense of humor, and it was a sense of cosmic humor. So tonight, he would like to say that it is very important to develop a sense of cosmic humor and to allow your humorous to be tickled very often by the angels so that you have the wherewithal to deal with all that comes your way on the path because the path can be intense yet it's your choice how intense it will be based on your reactivity based on how you deal with things based on how you see things your paradigms your perceptions your reality if you choose to morph your reality into a higher type of visionary reality where you see the brighter side of things, where you see the crystal lining instead of the silver lining of the clouds, then everything becomes ensconced in crystalline light and you will be able to metamorphize yourself into a spiritual butterfly of light and just kind of fly away into the cosmic ethers. Does this mean that you're not grounded? No, you can be grounded in practical work, yet a part of yourself is always in communion with divine joy. A part of yourself is always in communion with divine joy within your I am God presence because the I am God presence is all light and being all light, it's all joy. There's no darkness, there's no sadness, there's no ego, there's no down in the dumps consciousness. It's all up in the opposite of the dump. What's the opposite of the dump? It would be the treasure heap of heaven, right? The treasure heap of heaven. So if you choose to metamorphize yourself by your attitude of gratitude, by your desire to be delectable unto God and to allow God to assimilate you within the alchemy of your becoming who you truly are in both potential and in the glorified finality of your true I am presence, although it's never really final, it's ongoing, then your life becomes blessed, your life becomes charged, your attitude of gratitude keeps you ensconced in that crystalline superstructure of joy beingness. And to be ensconced in this superstructure of joy beingness is fun for everyone around you. If, like me this past week, you've been kind of a J-E-R-K at times, then, <laughs> then, you know, the work of the jerk just doesn't work, right? If you're full of levity, everything sings, everything spins, everything becomes ensconced in this flavor of heaven and this aroma of truth, of perfection, of beauty, of joy. To develop this attitude of gratitude and really develop it, not just talk about it, to actually develop it and to meditate upon what this attitude of gratitude really is, where it originates from, where it springs from, and how it may influence everything in your environment, everything in your life, everything in your reality. This is a dynamic which initiates and disciples of the word can choose to engage. And when you do this, you will have a lovely life. You will have a loving life, probably a lovely wife too if you're a man, and your life will be lovely. Your life will be lovely, Lanella says. Because like that song, you know, and 
the musical Wouldn't It Be Loverly? Well, it will be loverly. Yet you are the one who makes it loverly through your attitude, through the grace that flows through you. So in cycles where the biorhythms are kind of at their low ebb, you know, at the low cycle, where you have to kind of reach up into heaven and brace yourself to deal with the exigencies of the hour and maybe the burdens that at times come, this is the time to really choose this higher walk and to be very non-dubious, to be forthright in choosing through faith and through elan in your consciousness to enjoy the God presence, who you truly are. So we started out this service with the angel of joy. And part of the reason that she came was to ensconce us in this joy field so that we could feel what it is like to be in that field. And we can maintain that field of divine feeling throughout our day and carry it forward. And both carry it forward and to pass it forward and to convey it to others in our service, in our work, in our daily lives. If we are about our father, mother's business, and remember the mother's business is just as important as the father's business, and I think in the Bible, you know, when it talks about Jesus saying, I must be about my father's business, you know, Mary probably scratched her head <laughs> and said, well, what about my business or the mother's business? So Jesus probably had to self-correct if he actually said it, it could have been just one of those male things in the Bible, right? Either a misinterpretation or a mistranslation or a mistransliteration. He probably said, I must be about my beloved's or my father, mother, God's business or who knows what he said. In any case, if we are truly choosing to be about our father, mother's business, then that business will move us into the humming, busy bee state of beingness. Business beingness, get it? So when you're in the business of God and the beingness and the busy beingness of God, everything becomes joyful. I mean, do you think there's a bee in the universe that's not joyful? I mean, they're buzzing around and they don't really like to sting people. It's just when we get in the way and we're unconscious. They just love to you know, get that nectar and that honey and that propolis and whatever else from the flowers, bring it back and have the hive humming and all of its amazing alchemical work to provide for the queen and to provide for its ongoing life. And the collective is phenomenal. The collective consciousness of all of these busy little bees working together is phenomenal. Now we as initiates of the sacred fire are working on behalf of the Divine Mother, the real Queen Bee, to bring forth God's beautiful architecture of the Spirit, heaven upon earth. And when we are busy in the right way and enjoying this nectar, you know, can you imagine having a job where you're just in bliss all the time, drinking in the nectar from flowers? I mean, that's what heart streams are supposed to be, right? You're drinking in the nectar of the Ascended Master's consciousness in these heart streams, and then you go back to your hive, and you employ those words, those feelings, those divine essences, and you bless others with them. I think the bees are actually blessing everyone that they pass by because they're in bleed bliss, be bliss. <laughs> They're constantly in be bliss, you know? And so bliss is close to bless. So if they're in be bliss, they're constantly blessing and blissing out those in their environment. And it's a great thing. So this can be our work. We can be in be bliss and be a blessing through our bliss to every life form that we entertain, that we engage with. Lanella was very fond of sharing 
the deeper mysteries in metaphors and similes and stories and, you know, as Aesop and fables. Jesus did this through his wonderful stories himself, which were really spiritual fables. And Aesop, who was actually, I believe, from Africa and was black and was kind of crippled and didn't look very nice, yet was a phenomenal storyteller. And the fables had fantastic lessons for us to consider. They're very crystal ray stories. And they have twists and they have plots and they have interesting outcomes. And to intuit the deeper mystery within the final statement of these fables is something that could be a class and a study all itself. And Lanella says tonight that there were at least three deeper meanings in most of the fables that actually were for initiates. Just like, you know, Jesus had his stories and they had an outer meaning, every one of them had a deeper inner meaning and it related to the spiritual path. So Lanello says that Aesop's fables actually had three levels of meaning. And they were embedded partly within the story, partly in the final statement, which, you know, captured the moral. The moral of the story is blah, blah, blah. Well, that moral was a moral imperative that impelled the illumined higher, even as it attempted to impel the unillumined to their illumination. To be in the mind of Lanello is to be illumined by a great, great light. And Lanello invites us all to go to the retreat that was formerly the God and Goddess Meru's retreat over Lake Titicaca and to commune with the mind of the illumined masters, east and west, to allow our minds to become more transcendent, more open to heaven's illumination, which is way beyond what we can really perceive of humanly. We may think we are very wise in certain ways. We may feel that we have an edge on a type of spiritual meritocracy based on our long years of study, our decades of study, our understanding of the master's teachings, Lanello says we're all like little babes in terms of our true and deep understanding of the real path. So if you'd like to get a little bit more illumination and understanding of the deeper mysteries and the path of light, go to their retreat regularly over Lake Titicaca and they will open your mind and this will be like the most powerful trip you've ever been on for those who dropped acid or whatever without the drugs where you will be illumined by a kaleidoscopic colorful phenomenally sensorial experience of being in heaven and being in this state of heightened illumination where you can stretch the portals of your imagination, stretch your mind to new concepts and to higher realities. We dwell in a world here, he says, where many of us are locked into a matrix. You know, we've taken the blue pill. And we think we may have taken the red pill, being a Sunday Master students. Yet there's levels and there's layers and there's onion skin you know, layers. And if you think that you've fully taken the red pill already, Linnell says, think again, because that red pill really becomes a ruby pill through divine love. And when you take that, you will only be at the very beginning of ascended master consciousness and an illumined, awakened state of buddhic beingness. So, he says, finally, to close out this little discourse, to be humble. Because when we think we have an edge, when we think that others are below us or we know more 
or people are stupid, or they're unillumined because they don't believe what we believe, or they don't follow this particular philosophical or political view. It's a trap, and the ego traps us in that matrix. And to allow ourselves to transcend that dual state where we judge and we transpose part of our own dweller and our own ego mind, and he says there is a thing called the ego mind, upon others. We try to transpose that ego mind upon others to coerce them to think as we think, to believe as we believe. That's a trap. It is a trap. So let go of all of your thinking that you know it all, that you are wise, that you are fully illumined, and be humble in the possibility of coming before the feet of the great arhats, east and west, and coming to your commencement, which is a new beginning, and then you will realize that it, it will take a new level of humility to be God-taught at that level because you will be like a newborn. You will be like in kindergarten in comparison with the greatest cosmic minds of the universe. So to transcend our human mind is a lifelong work and it requires a humble attitude day in and day out so that you don't fall into this trap of judging others, analyzing things too much, and being in the seat of the scornful, he says. When you are judgmental, you sit in that seat of the scornful. When you are non-judgmental, when you allow God to be the judge, you align yourself with Jesus, the living Christ, the mediator, who is never scornful in his divine judgments and divine justice that is meted out. He's always in perfect balance betwixt the real and the unreal, the divine and the not so divine, and he is there to help everyone, you know, extending his hands to help people up into the new reality of spirit. So thank you, Lanello, for this short little talk. I take it to heart myself, and I pledge and choose to humble myself again and again and again because I know <laughs> I definitely don't know it all. So thank you, everyone, for coming tonight.